it, Chantel. Welcome to Animals, Fur, Feathers, and Scales. This will be I want you to grab a sheet of paper and a pencil or pen, and we're going to mark a few things on your paper to guide us along these videos. So on your sheet of paper, I want you to write six questions and leave space. We're going to answer these first three in part one of this video. Name one similarity between animal hair and human hair. Name one difference between animal hair and human hair. Name two ways that a mammal's fur can be helpful. So that's all for part one. The next question that I'll ask you is number four. Draw a close-up picture of a bird feather. Number five, name the three types of feathers and what they are used for. And then number six, name three differences you learned between snake scales and fish scales. What do people wear to protect themselves from various things in the environment? What do they wear for rain, for the cold, for the sun? What are some other coverings we put on our bodies to protect us? Feel free to pause this video as you think of your answers and then just click play when you're ready. So some of you may have said a raincoat is something they wear for the rain, a jacket or coat for the cold, and sunscreen for the sun. What are some other coverings we put on our bodies to protect us? A wetsuit, spacesuit, sunglasses, bulletproof vest, life jacket, camouflage, football pads or uniform, when we're playing sports, uh, surgical gloves, snow gloves, Footwear like tennis shoes, hiking boots, helmets, knee pads. Very good. Just as people can wear different types of clothing and accessories to protect themselves from the environment, all animals have some sort of covering that helps them to live in different environments. Can you think of how an animal's covering helps it survive? Can you think of how an animal's covering helps it to survive? It helps it to keep warm to protect it from thorns and branches, to make it hard to be seen by predators. For example, an animal that lives in snow might have a white covering to help them move. Example, feathers aid in flight to help them sense things around them. Example, a cat's whiskers help them to sense. This covering can aid in defense, camouflage, locomotion, and sensory perception. And it is instrumental in keeping an animal from drying out. What natural covering do we have on our bodies to protect our insides? Very good. Our skin covers our organs, muscles, and tissues. Humans, like other mammals, have hair growing out of their skin. Now let's get into animal coverings. Hair. Hair and fur are the same thing. They are both made of keratin, we call it a thick coat of soft hair covering the skin of a non-human mammal such as a fox or beaver. Fur. Feathers. Feathers are dead structures that have evolved from scales and are composed of beta keratin. Scales. Scales are plate-like structure that covers various animals, especially fish and reptiles. Shells. A shell is a hard outer layer including reptiles like turtles and mollusks such as snails, clams, and oysters. Who wears what? Mammals and hair. Mammals, including humans, have hair on his or her head and loses 50 to 100 hairs every day. But we also have many different types of hair. There's tiny hairs inside our ear that aid in, person, in a person's sense of balance, while hairs inside, like one's nose, acts as a filter to help prevent dust from entering the lungs. Mammals with fur can have two types of hair in their coat, guard hairs, which are long and thick, and downy hairs, which are soft and short. Downy hairs are short, very fine, fluffy hairs found closest to the skin. They form what is called the undercoat and keep the animal warm. Guard hairs are longer, coarser hairs that stick out above the rest, forming what is called a top coat. Guard hairs can serve as sensory receptors. 
think of it like what I was saying earlier about the whiskers on a cat. So if you haven't already, I want you to name one similarity between animal hair and human hair. Name one difference between animal hair and human hair. Name two ways that a mammal's fur can be helpful. Thank you for tuning in to part one of Animals, Fur, Feathers, and Scales. I'll see you next time for part two.